All right, so here now on the cadaver, we remove the trapezius and pull all that away. And then we end up running into the splenius. And see how this is the splenius capitis. And the splenius has a division in here that goes from the splenius cervicis on the inside here to the splenius capitis, which is out here. We remove that and you get down to the semispinalis capitis. So semispinalis capitis goes right to the back of the skull because it's run out of spinous processes to attach to. When you pull that apart and you get down here to a perfect little suboccipital triangle. So this is C2 and this is the semispinalis cervicis, which is running up to it. And it stops there at C2. So now from C2, you have rectus capitis posterior major. You can see it there. And then rectus capitis posterior minor, you can see it there. And then just to make sure that C1 moves with the skull, you have obliquus capitis superior and inferior. So this is obliquus capitis inferior, and this is obliquus capitis superior. Same thing on this side. Here is your obliquus capitis inferior, and here's superior. So coming out from underneath the triangle will always be the greater occipital nerve. And way down in this hole, you're actually gonna have the vertebral artery and coming out of here, a little tiny nerve on the side, which is the suboccipital nerve. And I hope that makes things better for your study of the suboccipital triangle. We call it that because it's not, it's not a semispinalis muscle, it's not any of the erector spinae, so we have to call them something else because it's not this semispinalis capitis. So we take that away, semispinalis services, rectus capitis posterior major, and rectus capitis posterior minor, obliquus inferior, and obliquus superior. And I hope that makes things better.